course, this is so exciting, guys, because we get to have the opportunity to have you all come up on stage and um, enjoy seeing what you've learned and the things that you do. See, because what you don't realize is you are such a very, very, very important part of this ecclesia. You bring this ecclesia life and energy and enthusiasm. And you know what? You are the future. You are a vital, vital, vital part of this, this group because you're going to be the ones one day that are up here uh, presiding for Sunday school or speaking or teaching a Sunday school class or opening the building up or passing out the emblems or playing the piano, those type things. That's going to be you one day, right? And so if we don't have you, then we don't have the future, right? So we are all here for you. We love you. We're excited to watch you perform today and show us all the things that you've learned. First and foremost, though, we need to give a big thank you to your teachers. Um, Sister Ruth Ann Hewitson teaches the three to five-year-olds. Sister Wanda Harris teaches the... Um, what would be the kindergarten first and second graders. Unfortunately, she's unable to be here today. Um, Brother Bobby is not doing well, so Wanda and Robert have gone down to be with him. Um, Sister Julie Doss, te or Julie Winfrey, sorry, teaches um, the third to fifth graders. Um, and so if we could give them a big round of applause, that'd be great, because they've just done a fantastic job. So our order this morning, we're going to have the youngest group, uh, Sister um, Ruth Ann's class will go first, then Sister Wanda's class, then Sister Julie's class, then my class, and then all of the younger children are going to get back up on the stage um, to sing some songs. All right? So we'll start out with Sister Ruth Ann's group, which these are three, four, and five-year-olds. All right, um, can everyone hear me okay? Uh, we have been going over Bible stories for little children, and it's um, been going from, we started in creation, and now we've worked our way up through Esther. Um, so the kids are going to each um, answer a question, and then we're going to sing one song for you. Um, can you tell everyone your name? My name's Ava. How old are you? Me. Who made everything in six days? God. God. <laughs> uh, what's your name? Charlie. And how old are you? Five. What did Adam and Eve do that made God angry? They ate from the um, tree of good and evil. <laughs> What's your name? Camden. Um, four. What did God? What did God put in the sky after the flood? Rainbow. <laughs> What's your name? Lydia. Five. Who did God ask to leave his country, his home, and his father's house? Abraham. What's your name? Yeah. How old are you? Five. What did God promise to give Abraham? What's your name and how old are you? My name is Wyatt and I'm five years old. 
How many plagues did God send upon the Egyptians? Ten. Give me one second and um, we'll sing one song for you. Um, <laughs> um, two of my students just showed up, so I'm going to have them answer the question. Can you tell her when your name? My name is Riley. What baby did Amram and Jochebed hide? Baby Moses. Leslie. Who spoke to Moses from the burning bush? An angel sent from God. All right, so up next is Sister Wanda's class, which Sister Martha is helping us with today. So y'all come on up. Is it on? Yes, it is. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Wanda has done a wonderful job with these children, and they are also wonderful to work with. Um, she started with Noah's Ark, which you might have seen last time, and then they've worked up through Genesis. So we're going to do a play for you today, which ties in with the gospel um, and the promises. And um, they're going to first start out by telling you how old their name and how old they are. Alina, and I am eight years old. My name's Alisa, and I'm ten years old. I'm Naomi, and I'm seven years old. I'm Ellie, and I'm seven years old. I'm Gail Ray, and I'm seven years old. I'm Nadia, and I'm seven years old. Okay.
Abraham was getting old and wanted to find a wife for Isaac. He sent his servant to the country where he came from to find Isaac a wife. The servant found Rebekah and she came back and married Isaac. Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah. Rebekah and Isaac had twin boys named Jacob and Esau. The Lord told Rebekah, Two nations are in thy womb. One shall be stronger than the other, and the elder shall serve the younger. This was strange because the child that was born first usually has the birthright. Isaac was 60 when his sons were born. The first baby was red all over like a hairy garment. His name was Esau. Then his brother Jacob, the smaller and weaker one, was born, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel. Jacob would quietly and thoughtfully listen to his father Isaac as he talked about the promises that God made to Abraham. But his brother Esau was too busy to listen. He was a rough and rowdy boy. The boys grew into young men. Esau became a hunter. He enjoyed being outside. Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. He was happy to stay home. He spent a lot of time with his mother, Rebecca. Isaac loved Esau because he was a strong man of the field and he enjoyed the meat that Esau brought home from his hunting trips. Esau was Isaac's favorite, but Rebecca loved Jacob, who thought about God and wanted to know about his ways. One day, Esau came home and was so hungry that he gave Jacob his birthright in exchange for his food. Jacob wanted this because he wanted to make sure that when something happened to their father, the family was never going to forget God and the promises given to Abraham and Isaac years before. Esau did not feel the same way. When Isaac was old and going blind, he sent Esau out to hunt and make his special stew before giving him his birthright. While he was out, Rebekah cooked food and had Jacob take it to his father disguised as Esau. Jacob put on some of Esau's clothes and put skins on his arms, hands, and neck. Isaac gave the blessing to Jacob. Then Esau came home and found out what had happened. Esau now hated Jacob. He became very angry and made life miserable for Jacob. Rebecca told Jacob it would be better for him to go away from his brother. Jacob left but remained faithful to God. As time passed, Jacob and Esau reunited after their father's death.
class. Okay, the last class we have is my class. Um, I started teaching this class uh, in January and I decided to combine the middle school age group and the high school age group. So if uh, you're a member of my class, if you could please come up here, up front. I told them you didn't have to get on the stage, but you are going to have to come stand up here, please. Thank you. Come on. All right, you can stand right over here. So, I have middle schoolers and high schoolers. My first thought for the Sunday school program was maybe we could sing a song, but they said, no, we're not singing a song. Okay, so I said, well, why don't we do a play? They said, no, we're not gonna do a play. Okay, well, um, maybe I could just, just ask you questions. No, we don't want you to ask us questions. I said, well, do you want to say anything? They said, no. I said, okay, I won't make you say anything. And they said, do we have to get on stage? I said, no, you don't have to get on stage. So you notice we're not on stage, and I'm not going to make them say anything. But the first day of class, I asked each of them to tell me a little bit about themselves. Because I wanted to get to know them, and I wanted them to get to know each other. Um, as you all know, uh, there's a lot being pulled on these kids in the world they live in, uh, at school, um, the social pressures and so forth, and um, we've got to pull harder. And I know growing up as a youngster um, at the Hall Ecclesia, my parents made it very well known to me that, you know, serving God and following God was to be first and foremost in, in my life. Um, but there were many Sundays that I came to meeting, um, not necessarily because God's word was first in my mind, but because there was someone there that I was interested in seeing, someone there that I wanted to talk to. And in my situation, there were a few adult men that I loved coming to talk about basketball or football or the sports that I enjoyed. And, and, and every Sunday, I look forward to seeing those individuals. And those individuals also love serving God and also put God first in their life. And eventually it sunk into me um, and, and it's wonderful. And so I think it's so important that these young people develop relationships with you all, and you all develop relationships with them. And so there's things about them that you might not know, and there's things about you all that they may not know. And so that's what we're going to do today. So we have an individual in this class. His name is Brogan. And Brogan told me on the first day of class that he really likes hockey, and he likes to uh, mountain bike, and likes to bike. So, if any in this, anyone in this room likes the sport of hockey, likes mountain biking, likes riding your bike, please stand up. Come on, please stand up. Here we go. Look at this. Look at all these hockey people and bike riders, right? So, during break, before Sunday school, after Sunday school, um, Brogan may be interested in talking to you about hockey or about riding bikes or about those things. And Brogan, you have that interest with these people as well. All right? Ryan Massey. Uh, Brogan is in the eighth grade. Eighth grade. Right. Ryan is in the seventh grade. Ryan Massey told me he likes basketball. And instantly, Ryan became my favorite student. I know. Yeah. <laughs> because I love basketball, right? And so if anybody else in this room loves basketball, please stand up. There we go. We've got a lot of bas basketball people in this room, Ryan, that, that you can talk to them about basketball and they can come talk to you about basketball, okay? All right, Rhea. Rhea told me that she loves art and she loves to cook. She became my second favorite because I love to eat. And so, <laughs> while I don't know anything about art, there are many people in this room that I know love art or are artists. And there are many people in this room that I know love to cook and are very good cooks. So if you follow, if you fall in that category, please stand up. If you love to cook, if you love art, stand up, Martha. Come on, Martha. I know you're not. We have artists. We have people that love to cook. So Rhea would love to talk to you about any of those um, hobbies that you have. Okay, Sayla. Oh, and Rhea is in the sixth grade. Sayla is in the sixth grade. Okay, Sayla. She loves to cook, she loves soccer, and she loves horses. 
told her, I said, I love horses, but I'm allergic to horses, but I do love horses. So if you love soccer, if you love horses, and if you love to cook, please stand up because Sayla would, oh, look at all these people. Where's Gate and LeRae? Gate and LeRae loves horses. Yes, Gate and LeRae loves horses. Gate and LeRae would love to talk to you about horses, Sayla. All right, soccer players. I know we have a lot of people that love soccer. Okay. Um, Lakeland, um, she is in the ninth grade, and Lakeland told me that she loves lacrosse, she loves soccer, she loves the University of Virginia. I mean, soccer, lacrosse, and basketball. Sorry, she used to play soccer. Lacrosse, you think I would know her interest. Lacrosse and basketball, and I know she loves the University of Virginia. So first of all, if you attended the University of Virginia, would you please stand up? There we go. We have a few attendees and more that aren't here. Keep, keep standing. If you love lacrosse, if you love basketball, stand up. All right. So we have some folks here that Lakeland can certainly relate to. All right. Next, we have Lael. Lael loves soccer. Lael loves to cook. Lael loves, she's very creative. She loves to decorate things and not only cook things, but like, you know, cookies and cupcakes and things that are all decorated and fancy. Um, she's very artistic, and so she's really into those type things. So if that's you and you love soccer on top of that, she also loves basketball, please stand up. Okay, Lael. Y'all can make some really cool desserts together and we can come eat them. Okay, great. All right, and last we have Lexi. Oh, Lael's in the seventh grade. Uh, Lexi is in the 11th grade. Lexi loves to dance. She's a very good dancer. I love to dance. I'm not a good dancer, okay? But we still love dancing. Um, if you love to dance, she's very creative. She loves um, hairstyling and cosmetology, right? Those type things that I'm not very good at. Um, she's very artistic. Anything with art and design and decorating, those type things. Please stand up. Okay, all right, Lexi, so there we go. We got a group, big group of people that can dance and love art and cosmetology and, and those type of things. All right, finally, if you attended middle school or you attended high school or you attended both, please stand up. <laughs> okay, so we have a room full of people. Keep standing, please remain standing. We have a room full of people that have experienced this year two different ways, right? But well, we may look older. Well, some of my kids didn't realize that like my life wasn't in black and white, that I lived in color, right? That, that you know, had color TV and so forth, that I'm not as old as they think they are, that they think I am. Um, we've experienced a lot of what you've experienced, right? We've had to deal with a lot of things you're going through in middle school and high school. Listen to us, ask us, talk to us. We care about you, we love you, and we want to do whatever we can to help you in this journey in serving God. Okay? All right. Thanks. All right. The final thing we have is we have our children's choir that's going to sing a song for us. So all the children that go into the choir first thing in the morning during Sunday school, please come forward. Thank you, Greg. That was so important. And there's even more. There's more topics that we have in common. The adult class was studying the gospel this year. And one of the questions was, what is the gospel? So there's a lot of answers to that. Um, there are four books of the Bible called the gospel according to. Jesus told us to preach the gospel. And we might be able to say that the gospel is the only true message that can save this world. So we're going to sing a song called The Gospel Is. Now we're going to sing it first. It's a call and response song. And then we're going to ask that you, we're inviting you to sing along with us for the second time. The gospel is the good news, the glad tidings, the 
kingdom of God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, the gospel is the good news, the glad tidings of the kingdom of God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay. Well, great job, kids and teachers. Thank you so much. Yep.